So admittedly, it's been a bit, friends, since we've put videos on this channel regularly, and it isn't because we're not interested in putting out more content. Frankly, this is one of our biggest focuses this year, is our YouTube presence. But there are other things going on in the world. You know, I, I'm reminded of when you get on an airplane to travel and they run through the safety stuff and one of the first things that they will tell you is that in the event that the oxygen masks drop you should secure your mask before securing the mask of the person sitting next to you the world is kind of like that at the moment there's a whole lot going on and quite frankly we've been focused just a little bit more for the last few weeks on making sure that our oxygen mask is secure. And I think that's something that we all need to really consider right now. Um, and along that line, what I want to talk about in this video is the idea of the worst case scenario. But I want to approach it a little bit differently than what you'll probably hear from a lot of other places. We'll talk about what the worst case scenario is in this video, but we're also going to talk about, in my opinion, how you can flip it around and kind of what we've been doing to flip it around here so that the worst case scenario is actually something that could be of a benefit to you, believe it or not. So we're going to get into that. Before we do that, my name is Dan. This is a Soul of Wisdom. If this is the first time you've come across this channel, greetings and welcome. I appreciate having you here. If you haven't already done so, please do take a moment to like, subscribe, and consider at the end of this video if you enjoyed the content, sharing it. It's one of the best things you can do for the YouTube algorithm. Also, before we move along, uh, another thing we've been working on in the background is we do have another channel that we've recently launched. It is called The Brick Historic. If you look behind me, it's pretty obvious that we have a, a bit of a thing for Legos here, a bit of a love for it. On the Brick Historic, we're building Lego sets, but while we're doing it, we're talking about the history behind the real world item. So, for example, at Mother's Day, uh, we built a, a um, Lego bouquet of flowers and we gave that to our mother. But in the video, while we're building it, we talk about the history of flower giving. So it's fun, it's entertaining, it's perfect for all ages, but also there's a little bit of an educational uh, bent to it as well. It is not political. It is just uh, us having fun and there has to be some of that content in your life too. And that's what we're going to try to provide with that channel. So I'll put a link to that channel in the description below. When you're done with this video, please do take a moment and go there, check it out, and please do consider subscribing to that channel as well because I think we're going to have a lot of fun over there and we've got our first four videos up. So there's some content for you to check out and uh, we'd appreciate that. Okie dokie on with the show so it's not hard to look at the news right now and realize that there's a whole lot of quote unquote worst case scenarios that we could potentially be facing you would have to be blind and deaf not to see that uh you know here in arizona gas is 519 or higher now i believe the national average when i looked the other day was like 460 so we're above the national average here. There's some places that have pushed over $6. I read the other day uh, that some areas were over 7 There are a lot of predictions that gas prices will be over $10 by the uh, end of summer in a lot of places. That's a worst case scenario, wouldn't you say? Uh, you need only go to the store to realize how prices are out of control. Uh, a dozen eggs in this area is pushing four dollars a dozen that's crazy uh, meat prices in some forms of meat have doubled some have stayed a little bit stable here in arizona where we have a lot of cattle uh, our beef prices especially ground beef hasn't gone outrageous yet um, you can still find some deals there but chicken is through the roof uh, which leads me to another worst case scenario uh, there is a bird flu that is out there that has been wreaking havoc on a lot of these chicken farms and there are millions upon millions of birds uh, that have been lost to this either through the disease itself or preemptively wiping out the flock because they're afraid of it spreading which has made chicken very expensive because there's not as much of it there which is driving up the egg prices as well so that's an issue uh, fuel costs not only for uh, your car but for your home are on the rise 
Electric bills are increasing in some areas. They're expecting them to double or even triple over the summer. Uh, there are the prediction of brownouts and blackouts that are going to be rolling uh, in certain areas because they can't provide enough energy for the homes this summer, especially if we get heat waves and stuff like that. Or if in California they get fires, which puts a lot of the the uh, power lines and stuff at risk, things like that. These are more worst case scenarios. We have what's going on in the Ukraine. Excuse me, going on in Ukraine. Somebody will ding me in the comments because I put the in front of it. Sorry, it happens. What's going on in Ukraine? That is just continuing on and on and on. There's all sorts of questions about the mental and physical health of Putin and who's really in control over there and will that will that spread if nothing else it's affecting the wheat supply over there and the energy supply over there as well which again is driving up prices more worst case scenarios so we can look at things and we can say lots of doom and gloom lots of problems we're all going to die okay and the media because you know if it bleeds it leads um uh, will push these these scenarios upon you. And I would say that you certainly don't want to not pay attention to what they're saying. You can you can ignore it and hope for the best. But then if the worst case scenario comes around, you're not prepared for it. So what we've been doing here is evaluating our situation and figuring out how we can combat the potential worst case scenario and do it within our means. It's not, it's not that hard to do, but you have to sit down and plan and think about things and then figure out how you can, can work with, with what you have and what you can do. And that's what we've been doing here. Specifically for us, we're concerned in Arizona where getting goods in can sometimes be difficult. Um, we're concerned about food. And we're definitely concerned about energy costs, which means we're concerned about how much money we're outlaying every month. So we've been working on changes to combat that. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you some additions that we've made to our family. Say hello, and you can see it on your screen here. This is a flock of 25 quail. These are all hens. These are all females. And they will lay eggs for us. Now, quail, on average, especially through their first year of life, once they get acclimated to where they're at, so we're still some days away from consistent production, but they will lay an egg a day. Now, it takes three or so quail eggs to equal one chicken egg. So with this flock, we should be able to yield somewhere in the area of the equivalent of a half a dozen chicken eggs every day, which is about what our family goes through and about what our family needs. Now, these guys are very quiet. They are very easy to care for. They're perfect in an urban and suburban environment because they're not noisy. And we can feed them for about 50 cents a day. So if you do the math on that, it means if we're getting a half a dozen eggs, equivalent chicken eggs a day, then we're getting eggs for a dollar a dozen, where right now they're pushing $4 a dozen in our area. Now, at the end of the first year, when their egg production starts to decline, we can harvest them for their meat because quail is delicious, and we can replace them and start all over again. Now, the, the quail um, are not expensive. In this area, we bought them from a local farmer. They're $12 a bird. Overall, the math works great for us. By the way, quail eggs are very nutrient-dense, so we're benefiting there as well. So what does this have to do with worst-case scenario? Well, worst-case scenario is prices continue to go up, right? And supply is becoming a problem. I've walked into the store too and eggs just were like decimated. You couldn't find them because again, they've wiped out all these birds and they can't keep up. So I've taken the worst case scenario in this place in this way and I've flipped it around. Now the worst case scenario is 
even if the grocery store suddenly has all the eggs in the world and the price goes down, the worst case scenario is I don't have to go to the store for my eggs anymore and I'm getting it cheaper. Anyways, that's the worst case scenario for me. So I've taken a bad worst case where, oh my God, I can't get eggs. And I've turned it into a, I've got an egg supplier right here. Worst case scenario, I've got a lot of eggs and I'll give them to neighbors if I can't use them all. So what? <laughs> all right, that's taking it and being a positive. Here's another thing that we've done. This is a setup that we have in our garage right now. And this is several shelves of microgreens that we have growing. Now here in Arizona, we struggle with our growing season. It is so hot in the summer and in the winter, it can get so cold at night that there's, there's a window in the spring and there's a window in the fall where you can grow. But the problem of course is we don't just need stuff in the spring and in the fall. We need stuff right now. Now we found in the local grocery stores as well that a lot of the vegetables, a lot of the fresh produce can be very hit and miss. And we think that that has the potential to get worse because another worst case scenario that's going on right now is that there are fertilizer shortages on the horizon. And this again has to do with the petroleum situation. A lot of our fertilizer is derived from the leftovers in petroleum production. All of this is just all tied together in ways that people don't fully understand. But it's looking more and more a possibility that that fresh produce in a lot of ways is going to become harder and harder to come by. So how do we combat the fact that we have weird growing seasons here, but we need stuff year round? We grow these microgreens. They're being grown indoors. They're 10 inch by 20 inch trays. We can produce them from anywhere from a dollar to $3 a tray, just depending on which green it is. It's way cheaper than what we can do in the store. The trays of microgreens are more nutrient dense, just like the quail eggs I was talking about before. So they tend to be more nutritious. Their flavor is more condensed, so they're more delicious. And again, the worst case scenario for us now is that I don't have to go to the store to get my greens. I've got them. I have a source of food. And if we produce too much of them, we've got a couple of pet rabbits that love it to death. They'll eat that stuff up all day long. Or again, I'll share it with the neighbors or whatever. The worst that can happen is that I've set myself up with a food source. Even again, if, if the grocery store prices drop and we don't have issues with supply in the fall and there's not a fertilizer problem and greens are, are abundant in nature, so what? I've, I've still produced food for less money than I can do it in the store right now. And I've set myself up. That's all I'm saying. The other thing that we've looked at here is money and how we spend it. We switched our cell phone provider. We were on AT&T. We're now on Pure Talk. It's the exact same network. It's costing us $80 a month less. That's just short of $1,000 a year less. That's real money. And interestingly enough, after we switched, <laughs> our connection is better on Pure Talk than it was on AT&T. There were areas of the neighborhood if we went for a walk or we drop signal. We don't have that anymore. Isn't that interesting? We're not even on the big boy network now and somehow it's better. That uh, That's really interesting to me because we've been paying AT&T a buttload of money for years and years now. Not anymore. The other thing we've done in this house, I've mentioned on this channel before that we take care of a couple of our parents. Uh, one of them, my wife's father, is very limited in what he can do. So it's important that we have television. That's the one form of entertainment that he can rely on every day. So we have to have a lot of channels. We have to have a lot of things for him to look at. And our cable bill was outrageous. Well, we've switched from that to YouTube TV. We were able to teach him how to use that, and he's doing well with it. And again, that's saving us about $80 a month. Now, I don't normally like the idea of throwing a bunch of money at Silicon Valley and whatnot, but quite frankly, Cox Communications here in Arizona is no less the evil empire than... Um, 
than uh, YouTube was. So why not? The other thing that we've done is we've switched our, our internet provider. That was Cox Communications. Again, we've actually moved to Starlink. And that wasn't so much a money thing as it was a reliability thing. The other thing is things have to work right now. We have to be able to be at our very best. And we had a lot of reliability issues with Cox. And we're finding with Starlink that we have no reliability issues. If they do updates, they tend to be in the middle of the night. It's a very stable connection during the day. Things work. That's what we need. So again, worst case scenario here, we're spending a few hundred bucks a month less every month by making some changes in who we're giving our money to. Well, even if prices don't go up, that's money we can bank or do something with. If prices do continue to go up, then we have more money to work with. So this is kind of my, my message here, my idea, is to start thinking about the worst case scenarios that we could be facing, but think about them in a different light. How can we make the worst case scenario that we're considering more of a positive thing, which is what we've been trying to do here. The positives are obvious. We're making our own food. Worst case, we have a little too much of it. We're saving money. Worst case scenario, we have extra money. This is how we need to look at things right now. I can't predict the future. I don't know what's going to happen. But if you look at the signs right now of everything that's going on, my personal opinion is that there is a higher probability that things are going to get worse before they get better. Now, you can sit back and hope or you can take proactive steps to try to set yourself up so that if things do go bad, you're ready for it. Now, a lot of things that we could do might be daunting. They might be scary to you. Um, you know, you could look at this and go, well, I don't know anything about quail. Well, I don't know anything about growing anything. You know what? Neither did we. I remember when I was in middle school, I had a set of parents come up to me, and forgive me if this sounds boastful. It's not meant to be that. But they came up to me and said, is there anything you can't do? And this happened after we just had the sporting event and I did real well at it. But, and you know, the, the young in you just kind of goes, ah, no, no, there really isn't. You know, you're a little bit cocky and whatnot. But I'm finding is, is I've obviously gotten older that the truth of it is, is there's a whole ton of things that I can't do but there's nothing that I'm not willing to go figure out how to do. That's what you need to understand if you're going to have any level of ability to prepare for things, any, any ability to adjust to stuff, is that you may not know what's, what's going to happen. You may not know how something works. You may not have ever dealt with something before, but you have to be willing to try. You have to be willing to figure it out, which honestly is kind of our secret here. There's nothing that we're not willing to take a few moments to try to understand, to try to figure out. And I think that's what you need to do. So hopefully this message makes sense. Again, it's a bit of an explanation for where we've been. We've been trying to get ourselves set up, quite frankly. But also, I think it needs to be a message of something that all of us should consider. Are we doing what we need to do to be ready in case things go south? Are we taking the worst case scenario and turning it around into the worst case still being a net positive? I think that's worth thinking about. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. Are there things that you are doing to get yourself ready in case things continue to get worse? Are there... Uh, do you think things are going to get worse or do you think it'll all be fine? I'd be curious your thoughts, so let me know in the comments. If you haven't already done so, like I said, please do like, subscribe, and share. I would appreciate that. Also, again, the Brick Historic down in the description below. Give that channel a look and subscribe there as well. I'm going to go ahead and leave it there. Until the next time I see you, thank you for watching.